afternoon. I finally got a glorious day to do a little bit of filming in. Welcome back, you're on the Cardi Golf YouTube channel. And today, I'm gonna to be talking about one of the most commonly asked questions in golf. So how annoying is it when you're playing in the winter, English winter, English golf course, you hit a nice drive, not so nice second shot, and you end up with this. Yuck. Super muddy, bare as you like, lie, and I've only got to hit it over a bunker to a tight flag. Now it's absolutely horrible, isn't it? And I get asked all the time, how, how do I play that shot? How do I strike it off that kind of a lie? How do I get it close to that pin? Well, the answer is, it's really, really difficult. The answer is I don't actually really know. You know, do, do, I, do I get a little bit steeper? Maybe get the ball on the back foot, maybe hit down more to guarantee a crisp contact. Do I move the ball forward so I create a nice shallow angle of attack? Um, maybe that will stop me from fatting it or thinning it because you know where we all think we're gonna hit it. That bunker. I suppose the only real answer is the only way you get half decent at playing this is by practicing it loads and loads and loads, which who can do that? The other, the other thing as well, people make a natural assumption that there's a good way to play it or there's a way to play it because the tour pros, how do they play it? How do they play that shot? Well, the answer is they don't. How often do the tour pros get bare muddy line? They just don't do it on their golf course. But I am going to try a few different ways. I'm going to see if there's anything that works for me. As always, it's all completely off the cuff. So if I find anything that works, I'll share it straight away. I'm going to try my first thing, which was to get the ball back a little bit and try and create nice crisp contact. I've gone with 58 degrees of loft because that's the only way I'm going to get the ball up high enough to stop anywhere near that flag. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so it didn't go brilliantly. I'm gonna have another go. <laughs> so I wasn't about to hit that one fat, was I? So there you go. Just to show you that we can all do it. Fat one in the front bunker, then one into the next bunker. Let's try something a bit different. Okay, so that's probably about as good as I could have done. I've hit it to about 15 feet. All I did there was try to play a completely normal shot. And actually, I guess I just got lucky that I struck it because it was such a horrible lie. I'm gonna move the ball forward a little bit and try a really shallow swing. Actually, to be fair, that felt quite good. That worked okay. I didn't feel any confidence over it. It felt really bizarre, but actually that worked really nice. So far, still favoring just normal. One shot I often think of using when I'm in this position is the, the deliberate duff, where you try and almost play it like a bunker shot, faster swing, take plenty of dirt, which is gonna kill a little bit of the momentum of the club. The ball tends to come out really soft. It's just very kind of high risk, high skill shot to play, which, Frankly, I probably haven't got in the locker, but I'm gonna have a little go here, see how that one works. Cool, that's quite good actually. That come out loads better than I thought it was going to. Actually, I think the, the most crucial skill when it comes to playing this kind of shot isn't actually a technical one whatsoever. It's, it's probably more mental. It's probably the old word acceptance and just getting into position and accepting that actually, you're probably not gonna hit this close. I've hit, what, three shots there. The, la the first two were obviously absolutely horrific. They've both gone in a bunker. Um, but the last three were actually really quite good. None of them are inside 10 feet. And so that actually says to me, well, is there another option? Do I have to take the risk of going over the bunker? I could almost play a little bump and run past the bunker to the back portion of that green and have 20 feet just coming down the hill back to the hole rather than being too greedy. So what I'm going to do now is a little experiment. I'm going to get my five balls back. I'm going to hit five chip and runs to the back edge. I'm then going to putt them all out, see how many shots that takes me. I'm then going to follow that by playing the superhero shot over that bunker off the bare lie five times and see how many shots that takes me all in all.
Right, okay, so that was just a simple seven iron chip and run to the back edge of that green. I've got five putts now, all in a very similar place, all about 25 feet. Let's see how many of them I get close. Wasn't the best read that, and I've left myself probably about seven or eight feet. So there's one thing, one argument, you know, if you can't actually leave yourself where you're definitely not gonna three putt, then you might as well have just been aggressive in the first place, I guess. Thank God that one went in. It's really important to learn from your mistakes. So after I hit the first one seven feet past, I then did it again twice um, before eventually I learned that maybe I don't have to hit it so hard. Right, my next shot is a little bit further this way. Must have actually struck this one, just topped the others with that seven iron. Oh, that was nearly excellent. Okay, so out of my five, I um, hold one of those putts and three putted one. So basically I've made with the seven iron bump and run, one up and down, um, one where I took four, yeah, four. All in all, the average is at threes. Okay. So I'm back in that place we all dread. I'm back with my lob wedge and I'm gonna try and be an absolute superhero now. Wish me luck. Oh, I actually hit one to about a foot there, so it is possible. No! Oh. That was cleared the bunker by an inch at most and is now about four feet away. <laughs> okay, so I'm on my way to go and hold those out. What have I learnt? The technique I adopted through that um, phase of shots was almost like the steep flop shot. Um, my instincts basically told me that that was the way I was gonna hit it closest and stay the safest, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna show you now my dispersion. Looking a lot better. As you can see, one of them's really close. The one that I said went to four feet, now I'm here is actually about eight feet. But that doesn't matter, it's still quite good. There's only one that's quite far away. It's about 20 feet away. And actually I'm okay with that because like I said that word earlier, acceptance. I accepted when I saw the lie that I wasn't really gonna hit it particularly close. Apart from that one that is two feet away. Remind you all of that. So I accept this as being okay and I'm hopefully not gonna three putt it. Let's get putting. I'm looking for better than an average of three. And then we can officially all take on the superhero shot every time we get that muddy bear lie. On it. I'd say that was probably my chance there, blown. I just jumped off something. Really put myself in danger now. So unless I've let myself down with my mathematics, which is well and truly possible, actually, the aggressive play is the way forward, isn't it? The moral of the story is, there is no right or wrong way to play that golf shot. It's just really, really hard and you've got to find, find something that works for you. The tour pros aren't really, really good at doing it or better than us at doing it necessarily. They just don't do it. Unfortunately, unless you're going to join Augusta anytime soon, you're going to get some of them lies probably. You might be a member at Augusta. And in which case, thanks for watching. If you want me to come over for a game, just let me know. But I mean, there wasn't a lot in it. So if you're really not confident for the lie, just go around the bunker, 
back yourself to two putt down there and you're not gonna ruin your day, are you? Right, that was really good fun and really good practice. I apologize to all those that care about the state of my barnet. It's been a long day and I wasn't actually gonna do any filming today. It just, well, couldn't resist the sun. I also wanna say thank you to Hintlesham Golf Club for letting me use the course to do all this. It's not something I can advocate, obviously, going and spending half an hour around the first green taking lumps out of bare patches. Um, but I do put it back together as best I can. And the most important thank you is for you all for watching. And I'll be back next week. Cheerio.